Next presentation is stricture formation after uh, tracheosophageal fistula repair, presented by Dr. Knight. Thank you. Esophageal tresias continue to be a challenging problem for pediatric surgeons, and esophageal strictures remain a common morbidity after repair of esophageal tresia. These strictures are significant because they often require dilation and sometimes further operative intervention, which increases patient uh, risk and cost. The purpose of this study was to examine the association of variables with stricture formation after esophageal atresia repair. This was a single institution retrospective review of patients who underwent esophageal atresia re repair from June of 1999 to January of 2014. All classes of TEF were included, however, patients who died prior to discharge were excluded. Data were collected on the patient demographics, the disease specifics, the treatments received, and the patient's outcomes. Univariate analysis for stricture formation used the chi-square and logistic regression test, and a stepwise multivariate logistic regression model was then created. It's important to talk about some of the definitions used in this study. Esophageal leak was determined based on post-operative esophagram, usually performed on post-op day seven. Need for dilation was determined by clinical symptoms and by stricture evidence on esophagram, either preoperatively or at the time of scheduled dilation. A clinically significant esophageal stricture was defined as those requiring more than three esophageal dilations. And this was chosen for two reasons. Um, first, it was in the mid-range of definitions from previous studies. And second, a recent study of IPEG members found that while most members had no maximum number of dilations they would perform prior to more invasive procedures, some would only try up to a maximum of three before moving on to more invasive operations. The study included 121 infants with a mean gestational age of almost 36 weeks. 84% were of gross type C, and 45% had an associated cardiovascular anomaly. 81% of the patients underwent open thoracotomy for repair, and around two-thirds were repaired with a single operation, while the rest received a multi-stage approach. 21.5% of the patients developed a clinically significant stricture requiring more than three dilations. Median time to oral intake was nine days, and 10.1% of the patients had an esophageal leak on the esophagram. The univariate analysis found five variables that were significant um, for association with stricture formation. And these are shown on the left side of the screen while the non-significant variables are on the right side. Significant variables included the TEF gross type, the operation type, the staging of the operation, time to oral intake, and post-operative leak. And due to sample size, seven variables were then selected for the multivariate analysis. These included the Watterson classification, the operation type, the operation staging, the time to oral feeds, uh, esophageal leak, uh, future gastrostomy tube requirement, and a cardiovascular anomaly. TE TEF type was not included in this because of the small numbers of the less common types. Variables were then sequentially removed until all variables were significant. This left a final model of three significant variables. Thoracoscopic repair had an odds ratio of 7.4 for stricture com formation compared to open repair. Additionally, stage repair had an odds ratio of 6.36 for stricture formation compared to primary repair. Interestingly, patients with a cardiovascular anomaly were found to have uh, lower odds of stricture formation. This study uh, suffers from some of the inherent weaknesses common to all retrospective studies, including the reliance of data found in medical records. And um, although there were 121 patients, um, which is fairly large given the, the rare condition, it does limit the number of variables that could be included in the multivariate analysis. And finally, um, some of the important variables to stricture formation, such as the presence of uh, gastroesophageal reflux 
or the exact gap length could not be reliably gathered and had to be estimated by other proxy variables. So in conclusion, thoracoscopic repair and a staged approach were both associated with an increased risk of stricture formation, um, while the presence of cardiovascular anomalies were associated with a decrease in stricture formation. And this information is important in the consultation of our parents regarding the prognosis and the possible need for future dilations, as well as provides some direction for future quality improvement and uh, initiatives to decrease strictures. Thank you.